BM guys and gals. Thank you to all the subscribers of this channel. Also, thank you to any non-subscribers viewing this episode because you have an interest in a skeletal muscle disease called inclusion body myositis, or IBM. Please join us by pressing the subscribe button and notification bell. Symptoms of IBM vary, but usually include progressive and serious weakness in the muscles of the hands, forearms, thighs, and lower legs, and affects adults usually after reaching the age of 50. There's no doubt a person that has been diagnosed with IBM faces a special set of circumstances in his or her life. Our initial fears usually include thinking about how rough the rocky road along the IBM journey will become for us. Will I be one of the lucky ones that gets an IBM diagnosis but only experiences the minimum effects of this disease and can still walk at age 80? Or will I be one of the fast progressing IBMers who requires a power chair to avoid additional serious injury from falls within the first few years? Are only a couple of the questions we usually ask ourselves after getting a diagnosis. Whatever is your case, advanced planning is key in mapping out your IBM future. I'm sure there has been plenty of pyramids developed by famed psychologists and medical professionals. According to psychologist Abraham Maslow, in a book he wrote back in 1954, our actions are motivated in order to achieve certain basic needs. His pyramid suggests that people should be motivated to fulfill the basic foundational needs before moving on to other levels of needs. So, what are the basic needs of a person with inclusion body myositis that should be used as a wide, solid base for everything that's going to come in your IBM future? I'm not sure if I've ever seen specifically in reference to inclusion body myositis, so let's discuss a pyramid as it relates to those with IBM from an IBMer's viewpoint. For this discussion, I want to explain the need for foundational planning starting soon after being diagnosed with IBM. The three-dimensional pyramid shape not only shows us the importance of a good foundation, but also can be used to show how our functionality decreases as our IBM progresses. We still have a rather broad functionality ability at the beginning of our IBM journey, but as the pyramid shape shows, that functionality gets smaller during the progression of this ugly disease. Breathing, nutrition, and shelter are critical needs for building a foundation that supports so many other items going up to the top of the IBM pyramid. In reality, an IBMer could probably build a separate pyramid for each of these foundational segments, but we won't for purpose of brevity and clarity. In this pyramid, the foundation or lower level consists of the major groups that help support anything on higher levels. For simplicity's sake, let's define an IBMer's foundation to include breathing, nutrition, shelter, and as important, a fourth critical need called homostasis, or the self-regulating processes our bodies perform for us every day. Homeostasis includes those biological systems in our bodies that maintain stability and equilibrium while adjusting to conditions that are optimal for survival. If homeostasis is successful, our life continues. If unsuccessful, disaster or death follows. Organ functions are a good example of our homeostasis. With IBM, we must never lose sight of taking care of our non-skeletal muscle components. A good example of our homeostasis is the thermoregulation or regulating body temperature in our bodies. As our muscles thin out, regulating our body temperature becomes more and more difficult as unaffected good muscles help generate heat when used. Another important body system is our osmoregulation or the ability to maintain the right amount of water and electrolytes inside and outside cells in our body. Our kidneys also work hard for us and help us maintain the right amount of salt in our bodies. Your body is regulating other chemical mechanisms as well to keep systems in balance. These utilize hormones as chemical signals, for example, blood sugar levels. In this situation, the pancreas would release either insulin when blood sugar levels are high 
or glucagon when blood sugar levels are low to maintain homeostasis. Being cursed with diabetes and IBM isn't a good situation. Taking care of all our homeostasis systems must be part of our foundation to our IBM pyramid to avoid serious future complications. The two foundation blocks, breathing and nutrition, are must-haves to sustain life in general and a proper shelter that later includes thinking about future caregiver care within that shelter are necessary to sustain an IBM life at home. Our respiratory system is one of those automatic components that work without us even thinking about it, but it can easily be disrupted by pneumonia, coronavirus, or other illnesses affecting the respiratory system. Dysphagia or swallowing difficulties usually accompany IBM in a majority of cases and getting food or drink into our lungs should be of a serious concern to us. Your nutritional routine may have to be altered for many reasons. If you are overweight or obese, losing weight will create more favorable conditions for your later life with IBM. Also consider your weight reduction a favor to your spouse or caregiver who you will later become very dependent on. Losing weight will also increase the chances of a positive homeostasis outcome. Proper hydration should be lumped into your nutritional foundation block. That very important shelter foundation block can be very scary for many newly diagnosed IBMers. Because it affects so much of the inside and outside of your home, it's possible that the cost to modify everything for your IBM future may be difficult or impossible, or your unfortunate choice might be to have to find a more suitable single level dwelling. Because many or most IBMers will depend on a power chair in their future, your dwelling will have to be a single level accessible with wide hallways and doorways, or have an elevator installed to move you and your power chair between floors. Remember that in the third stage of IBM, a stair lift would require a power chair on both levels and transferring from a stair lift to a power chair may become difficult or impossible. Many IBMers will go through a bathroom modification that will consist of major expenditures of installing a large roll-in shower and maybe removing a bathtub and purchasing and installing a toilet seat device that will get you to the standing position after using the toilet. Remember that the toilet seat device may not work for you forever as your transfers will become impossible during the later stage of IBM. As I've just explained, the shelter block is very foundational to so many levels above it, including hygiene, sleeping, and overall mobility. Continuing with your home modifications, your shelter's entryway may require a ramp surface to allow you in and out of your home, both before and after using a power chair. While still in stage one, installing some lever type door handles will allow you access to areas of your home when your hand strength can no longer turn a roundish doorknob. Some furnishings inside the home will need to be changed to adapt to your IBM weaknesses. You will be replacing your favorite recliner chair with one that has a lifting mechanism to help you stand up from it. A recliner with a vertical lift is usually preferred by most IBMers. In the bedroom, a bed with a high-low feature will be calling your name sometime while you're in stage two of IBM. As I've just mentioned, the breathing, nutrition, shelter, and homeostasis building blocks are only the foundation for what's ahead in your life with IBM. Although it may seem like almost an impossible task, believe me, many have been through this disease from their early diagnosis days and survive to when they are completely immobile, but not without proper planning from the start. I realize that many newly diagnosed IBMers will choose to take the attitude that I'm going to be one of those IBMers that will still be golfing at age 75. Unfortunately, that's not going to work in about 75% of IBM cases, regardless of what we try, and three of the four pyramid foundation blocks that I mentioned in this video should be followed by everyone, including those without IBM. The largest major decision point will be when to start acting on the shelter foundation block 
of your IBM Pyramid. I hope this discussion about building the foundation for your IBM Pyramid accomplishes one thing, and that's to get you to think about the important stuff that has to be done first so that everything to follow has a good foundation under it. Thanks for tuning into this episode. Please leave comments in the comment section below. Please subscribe to this channel as the number of subscriptions adds to the YouTube algorithms used to promote these videos about IBM. Now get building, my IBM friends.